Hello and thank you for joining me for today's Give Him 15. The title of our post today is Healing the Breaches of History. Holy Spirit is aligning the nations and the spiritual realm, preparing them for his coming outpouring. Yesterday, I read a word from Dr. Scott Reese, which spoke of this. Scott used an allegory in which the earth had a spine encircling it. The spine had misalignments and diseased places. Pain and suffering initiated from these locations. In the vision, God was healing and realigning points on the spine, much like a chiropractor would do for a person. I feel I need to elaborate more on this picture in today's post. In my book, An Appeal to Heaven, I write about al alignment, and I'll quote from the book. Every family, race, and nation has painful chapters in their story, points on their historical timeline with which they would rather not be connected. America is no exception. As I sought the Lord regarding this, he began showing me that nations can disconnect from their ungodly past. Not only is this possible, it is essential. It is essential in order to attain a healthy future. To help me understand this, Holy Spirit led me to Hebrews 11, 3, which says, by faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God so that what is seen was not made out of things which are visible. A more literal Greek translation of the first half of this verse is, by faith we understand that the ages, ion is the Greek word, by faith we understand that the ages have been properly connected or aligned, katartizo, by the spoken words of God. Ages is the best translation of the Greek word ions. Again, by faith, we understand that the ages, the ions, have been properly connected or aligned by the spoken words of God. The Greek word I translated as properly connected or aligned, katartizo, means to put something into its proper position alignment, or connection. I mentioned this word yesterday. In biblical times, the setting of a broken bone was katartiza, as, as was the relocation of a dislocated joint. Mending a torn net was, as well, katartiza. The restoration of a fallen brother or sister in scripture is also this word. Generally speaking, katartizo means to properly position a person or thing, whether at its inception or as a restoration. The reason it is at times translated prepared, the worlds were prepared, the ages were prepared, is because properly positioning something, as in the spine, prepares it for use. Interestingly, this verse in Hebrews 11.3 tells us God connected or aligned the ages or seasons of time. Interesting. In other words, he declared the general flow of history and how each age would connect to the next. Isaiah 46.10 says he declared the end from the beginning. Also, knowing the effects of Adam's sin and fallen humankind's consequent sinful nature, God knew there would be dislocations and breaches in history's timeline. Like potholes after a hard winter, his original decreed connections would need seasons of repair. Defilement would come. 
pain would then flow through history's breaches, creating the need for restoration and healing. Katartiza. God knew, for example, that innocent blood would be shed, abuses would transpire, idolatry would take place, covenants would be broken, slavery would occur, and a host of other sins would interrupt his original plan. These breaches in the timeline would mandate restorations, reformations, like reformations, reforming things, and reconnections to his predetermined plan. Therefore, God not only declared the aligning of the nations, but where he knew it would be necessary he also decreed their realignment, the healing of history. The fact that God heals history can be seen in Isaiah 58, 12. It says, and those from among you, I like that phrase, those from among you, my people, those from among you will rebuild the ancient ruins. You will raise up the age old foundations and you will be called the repair of the breach, the restorer of the streets, the restorer of the streets in which to dwell. This verse clearly states that God heals, mends, and restores history. Katartiza. He doesn't simply ignore history's breaches and move on. We humans engage in denial at times because it seems to alleviate the pain. God, however, does not. His plan, as Isaiah said, is always to rebuild, raise up, repair, restore the broken timelines. As Scott said, he realigns a nation's spine. The mending of these breaks allows the pain of the past to heal, not simply be buried. Denial, as we know, only buries pain and causes the wound, the wound to remain unhealed. When this occurs, the pain will always resurface at some point in the future, causing anger, violence, broken relationships and other expressions of dysfunctional behavior. Without true healing, this cycle of pain repeats itself generation after generation. Racism in America is a prime example. Because we have not tapped into God's redemptive ability to heal and restore, pain is still flowing through our broken history. Can you imagine? Almost 200 years later, pain is still flowing through our broken history. Our spine is misaligned. Katartizo, the realignment of the ages, hasn't occurred. Therefore, each new age or generation has to continue dealing with the wound and pain. Government tries to heal the breach through laws and programs, but this will never succeed. Individuals attempt it by denouncing and condemning the injustices and prejudices, but this too fails. Other misguided people espouse the get over it or move on approach. Meanwhile, the wound festers. Government and its well-meaning laws and programs can never heal um, uh, history's wounds or erase its sins. The, the insensitive get over it crowd only offends, rubbing salt in an already painful wound, while the unhealed spokespersons of the wounded simply release more venom and hatred. These approaches only make the pain of the dislocation worse. However, Isaiah 58, 12 makes clear that God does indeed heal the breaches of history. And he uses 
people. Those from among you is his plan. Katartizo is intended to happen through redeemed people as they understand and participate in God's plan. We are the healers and peacemakers. Through humility, repentance, prayer and fasting, God's redemption occurs and history can be healed. In the powerful allegorical vision and prophecy God gave Scott, the damaged places on earth were pictured by an injured spine. Holy Spirit said he was coming to heal many of those places, realigning that which had been damaged through sin and rebellion. I am confident that in the coming revival, people and cultures will be healed of yesterday's pain and bondage, allowing God's life and blessing to flow through catartizoed joints. Let's pray. Lord, we are encouraged by the words you are releasing through prophetic individuals. We realize that evil will continue to be released on earth until you return. We also know that when you return, there will be goat nations as well as sheep nations. Sadly, not everyone will be saved. However, many will be. Millions and millions more people will come into your family before the end takes place. You will have people in heaven from every tribe, tongue, and nation. We lay hold of this word regarding your real, you realigning portions of the earth. We pray for those in bondage to sin, false beliefs, and idolatry. We ask for healing from the fruit of this hunger, disease, oppression, and suffering on so many levels. Most of all, we ask for salvation. We ask for the spirit of revelation to open the eyes of millions around the world so that they might hear and understand the gospel and clearly see Christ. Heal the spine of many nations and people. We pray for America. We ask for the healing of our apostate nation. Put us on your adjustment table. Twist, push, pull, maneuver in whatever way is necessary in order to realign us. Deliver us from lying, agenda-driven educators, media outlets, and government officials. Bring cleansing and adjustment to the church and light the greatest revival fire earth has ever seen in the young generation here and around the world. And lastly, Father, we pray for men and fathers on this Father's Day weekend. May there come a seismic shift and an awakening to men. Give us the greatest revival among men we've ever seen or experienced. Strengthen fathers, husbands to be the men you need them to be. Encourage them. And we pray all of these things in the wonderful name of Jesus. Our decree, we decree that a divine shift is occurring in the earth realigning people and nations to Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, portions of today's post were taken from my book, An Appeal to Heaven. You can get that book if you're interested by going to our website, dutchsheets.org. Thank you so much for joining us. 
and I look forward to seeing you Monday. Have a great weekend.